Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Global Connections. Today we're going to talk, talk about shifting geopolitics from Germany. And of course, Germany is connected to so many things and places, including the U.S. Um, is Germany less interested in Ukraine and Israel these days? What has changed? What is happening? Where does it all go? With Dr. Rup Khandakar, a uh, geopolitical strategist who can help us understand. So help us understand the politics and geopolitics in Germany these days. Let's start with that, including signs that Germany may not follow through on its earlier assurances of support for either Ukraine or Israel. How much of this is a result of Putin's threats and propaganda and the failure of the UN and the US to follow through on Israel? Oh my goodness, so many issues, so many things happening. So many troubling events. Welcome to the show, Rubati. Hello, Haji. Thank you for having me uh, on your show. Always my pleasure. Let's talk about Germany. So many issues, really. It's it's a big, a big program today. So Germans' uh, geopolitical space in today's uh, contemporary times is very complicated. Jay. And uh, you, we know what history Germany has and how it's coming through. So uh, when we say that uh, Germany has relied on geoeconomic uh, liberalism to uh, sideline their geopolitical concerns in their modern uh, avatar, uh, that is, uh, we have to look back at Francis Fukuyama's end of war when he said that your geoeconomics will uh, transcend into your geopolitics. So geoeconomics liberalism that he talks about. And uh, Germany is trying to follow that. And uh, Jay, we see the liberal uh, economies, uh, economics and all coming in. Um, how do you tell you? No. The manifesto is, uh, uh, let me get this right, Wandel, Dursch, Andel means change through trade. They gave that a priority. And um, Russia was a big part of this because interdependence on uh, Russian oil and gas became so evident that uh, Germany was cent percent on uh, um, Russian oil. When Russia invaded uh, uh, Ukraine, the Russia-Ukraine crisis, uh, Germany was at a, a crossroad. They, they, they are the sec 17 uh, billion dollars. And uh, they are the most dependent on Russia for the basic oil and gas. So how could they back? But uh, Jay, entire Europe is going for a uh, ecological transformation. So they are going for the green gas and all that. And Germany had already started opening their ports for their own uh, oil and gas. And so they have kind of drifted towards their self-dependence and cut off Russian dependence. So that's where they start. Um, when you talk about the domestic uh, concerns, this is what they stand, where they stand. And uh, Chancellor Schlotz uh, has been uh, having a very, what do you say, this uh, concept of a grand strategy in international politics, Jay, is about how your, uh, your country performs on the world stage. And Germany has been lacking that categorically. It has been lacking a grand strategy. If you uh, find this uh, term, it's got a very lot of connotations behind it. And uh, Germany has been lacking that in its implementation and its portrayals. So, well, let me, let me just yeah. offer this. Uh, Germany is the strongest economy in Europe. In some ways, it, it is um, you know, the leader, the economic leader in Europe. It has fallen behind on military production, although it has the um, you know, the industrial complex uh, to manufacture weapons. It hasn't really manufactured uh, all that many weapons and delivered all that many weapons to uh, Ukraine. So what, what you have is a potential. Um, what you have is um, Germany could be, uh, some say should be, the leader of Europe, more than France, more than Italy, more than the UK. Um, but that hasn't really come to pass. And I take what you're saying to mean that if you're going to have the potential this way, if you're going to have, you know, the strongest economy and the greatest potential um, to 
and create and deliver weapons to Ukraine, then you, you have a kind of obligation to make a plan, a purpose, a reason to do that. Um, and so they haven't developed a plan. And that, that's too bad because they could, they should develop a plan. Uh, so please, please continue. So, Jay, uh, that, uh, that concept of being able to force your international policies forcefully and uh, being able to implement your aims and objectives uh, coherently in the in domestic stage is what Germany has been lacking. It's not been a world player because, you see, they have budget concerns. Domestic pressures are far and um, not, uh, you know, they're normal now in uh, Germany with so much of recession, migration, migrant uh, problems, and, uh, you know, the budget problems, the funding that happens abroad. They have a, they're dra they have a dragging in their uh, st uh, stature, Jay. They have not been able to assert in one, uh, you know, what is that? They have not been uh, able to assert very uh, emphatically what Germany stands for. Now, you can not say that Germany is on this side or this side. They have been either quiet mode or they have been uh, either uh, they have been changing the sides. Now, Ukraine and Russia, uh, they have not, they have supported Ukraine. In uh, so, They are the largest military donor. Jay, you have always spoken about uh, the kind of, uh, you know, Leopold uh, 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 tanks that they have given the uh, howitzer machine guns that they have given everything uh, the missile so uh, they have done all that they have done uh, the needful but they have not been able to assert their position that is what happens with germany too and chancellor schlotz uh, he is uh, just reasonable in his approach in as a leader well, you he's, know got, what he's I mean? got pressure from both sides I mean, I think yeah. most German people want to, you know, want to, you know, defend uh, Ukraine. Um, but I think he's got pressure from maybe it's the right that says, well, don't go all the way. For example, they have this Taurus missile, which is a high tech missile, long range mm. missile that would be very useful for the Ukrainians. Uh, the Ukrainians have, have developed a strategy of attacking inside, attacking military infrastructure inside of Russia. Um, you know, to degrade the Russian military effort. And the Taurus missile would be perfect for that. But uh, Olaf Scholz is saying, no, no, no. Uh, if we do that, then somehow that's going to anger Mr. Putin, and he's going to uh, use uh, either tactical or worse uh, nuclear weapons. Um, and, and they take the nuclear threat seriously. So he's got that pressure going on. And as a result, he's, he's, he's quivering. Uh, he, he's also uh, like wishy-washy. Yes, the Leopold tanks, and yes, some weapons. But remember that the uh, German military complex, industrial complex, is weak. And although they allocated a, a hundred billion euros to rebuild their army, which is you know, degraded, um, the fact is they haven't spent that money yet. So they're they're like uh, on the way somewhere, but they don't know where they're going. And I suggest to you, and I would like your opinion about this, is that because the U.S. has conceded its leadership position in, in Europe, uh, the U.S. is, and Biden included, being wishy-washy um, about Ukraine, um, Olaf Scholz is looking for direction, He's looking for support, looking for somebody to join him in making a plan. But for the lack of a plan, an action by the U.S. for the lack of funding and weapons from the U.S., he's reluctant to do that. I think he doesn't want to be by himself. He doesn't want to stand up as the leader of Europe without having uh, the United States as the leader of the free world. And I'm afraid the United States, are you ready? Are you sitting down? The United States is no longer the leader of the free world. Your thoughts? <laughs> you always point out, and you're always right. Uh, Germany, uh, as a uh, as a country, and its uh, uh, international approach started deteriorating during Merkel's time. And uh, Jay, 
she looked like she was asserting Germany, but actually she was kind of disintegrating German policy in such a way, and that influenced European policy. So uh, she got this confusion that is there in German politics, uh, whether to have a closed economy or open economy, let the migrants come in, let the, the migrants not come in. No, you, you have a, a unified uh, European Union, uh, but you don't want too much dependence. This kind of confusion that was brought in was brought in during Merkel's time. Chancellor Schroes is just a, um, a torchbearer of what Ma Merkel's legacy. He's not been able to put his position, but Merkel was a very confused leader, I feel, in German politics. She misled Germany. Germany could have gone far ahead of France. You know, France uh, is taken prime position in uh, European Union due to lack of a leadership in Germany. And uh, well, yeah, that is talk what... about Macron's statement only a, a week or so ago, where he said, I'm not taking the possibility of sending troops uh, to Ukraine off the table. That is a possibility. This is a very threatening statement from a diplomatic point of view. Um, and that suggests that Macron has um, a greater leadership potential than Olaf Schultz. It suggests that, and, and, and France does have a, a formidable army um, that it could send. He was, it, it wasn't clear whether he was talking about sending the French army or the, or the NATO army or somebody else's army, but boost on the ground is what he was talking about. And, and I wonder if there's a contention or a competition for leadership um, between Schultz, between Schultz and Macron, uh, what's the deal here? The Trinity, Jay, the Trinity, the Britain, France, Germany, Trinity, and uh, they are not that strong this time. That's why we have a very weak European Union response in the Russia-Ukraine war. We have a weak uh, EU response in the uh, Israel-Hamas terror uh, uh, struggle. So this kind of uh, uh, weak. European Union, these three powers need to be very strong to have uh, integrated European Union policy. And they are not. They are really not. It's because Schlotz is falling short. Uh, Macron is dealing with domestic problems at a high. Uh, Sunak is uh, uh, assertive, but he's got a big Britain at his hand, at his disposal. So uh, these kind of things make European Union as a whole, not only Germany, a weak player in geopolitics. So, with the dynamics that is happening, the the space that which we 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 you know you and we uh, discuss every day, there is a change in strategy today. U.S. is supporting tomorrow, not happening. Uh, this is a dynamic changes, Jay. And where do we see Germany or France? The names coming. In? If you want to be an active player in international politics, you have to be in the midst of things, and they are not. That is just the reality of it all. That they are not, they don't take sides, they don't support, they don't, they don't uh, emphatically uh, stamp their uh, authority, and uh, that makes you strategically weak. Yeah, well, you know, you wonder about the EU. I, you know, the EU has traditionally had problems in getting together and making collective decisions, and you know, it's the way Europe is. There's a lot of countries there; they all have their own views of things. Um, and historically, they don't necessarily agree on things. I am reminded, and I mentioned this on one of our other shows, um, of a movie that was made uh, maybe a decade ago about a, a pan-European uh, um, symphony. And uh, I think it was uh, home ported in, in uh, Paris, but it included players from all over Europe. And they simply could not agree on things. Glenn Close was in that movie. They simply could not agree on things. And ultimately, they fell apart um, because they could not reach agreement. And it was a, a microcosmic statement of the way Europe is. And it was one of the reasons for Brexit, which is now being covered in the press. You know, there are people who'd like to reverse Brexit or modify Brexit. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, I think a lot of Brits, even if they weren't concerned about the migrants, were concerned about the inability of the EU to make decisions. And one more point I would like to ask you about is this. If the EU cannot make meaningful mm, collective decisions, um, that has got to um, affect NATO's, NATO's ability to make 
collective decision, particularly uh, with the, the abandonment of the United States, essentially the abandonment of the United States. Um, and so we should be, in my view, we should be worrying about, what is it, Section 5 of the NATO agreement, uh, the mutual defense provision of the agreement, uh, whether they will be able to do something if, as and when the time comes. It's not clear to me that the countries of Europe can get together. It's not clear to me that the countries of NATO can get together and uh, do something, even though they agreed to do it. Your thoughts? Yeah, Jay, you're so right about this, because uh, the notion of collective security that Europe enjoys, 41 nations, but they enjoy collective security only through NATO. And we have uh, Mr. Trump coming in and calling, you, you, dis you discussed it on your program, end of NATO coming uh, across. So they are going to lack this collective uh, security umbrella. Uh, Jay, without having to spend that much on uh, military uh, expenditure, they are having a NATO Cup. That is so important. Uh, NATO headquarters is located at the uh, cockpit of Europe, Brussels. So uh, it's right. NATO is settled very well right in the heart of Europe. They should value NATO and uh, not make it a toy-like uh, situation where Ukraine wants to join, doesn't want to join, we don't want it now. You want Ukraine to join, make it join, start it, uh, finish it. Yeah. Well, really, this all works in, in Putin's favor. Putin yes. loves to see the cacophony. He loves to see the chaos. He loves to yes. see Europe not being able to get together. Uh, he loves to see internal dissension. He loved Brexit. Some people think he had something to do with Brexit. Um, and, you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, all these things that demonstrate a lack of cohesion uh, in in Western Europe, and a lack of mm, a lack of commitment by the United States, and it's remarkable. But just a footnote to that: remarkable that Trump is acting like the voice of America, um, where Biden can't seem to remember what he promised. Uh, you know, is, is wishy washy on Ukraine. Um, you, you have Trump who says he's going to give it up. Uh, he's going to he's going to let the uh, Russia do what they want to do uh, with countries in NATO. Wow. Um, he's, he's giving it away to, to Putin. And that has a huge effect on, on Putin's calculus here. Uh, even though Trump is no more the president than you and me. In fact, you and me would be better, would be better presidents, if you really want my opinion. Um, anyway, so, so what I'm saying is Trump is really out of school on this. You know, individual citizens who are not president or, you know, authorized members of the Secretary of the, of the State, State Department should not be making statements about diplomatic relations. And yet Trump is doing that on a regular basis and it's having an effect on Putin. So Putin is being encouraged in Ukraine because nobody's standing up against him. It's a real problem that this country is so divided that way. Uh, who, who do you listen to? Anyway. Uh, I think Putin gains for all the problems that we have in getting together, all the problems that the EU has in coming to, uh, you know, agreement and finding a plan. Your thoughts? Jay, uh, rightly you say so, that uh, the democratic process that we talk about, the voting, the non-voting, that, that helps Putin to a large extent, large extent. I mean, Ukraine has gone through and it's devastated its own existence just to join NATO. But has it been able to join NATO? Has the NATO been able to protect it? There is no overt uh, um, protection at all. Who's enjoying? Like you said, uh, Putin. Now, Jay, uh, see for an example the kind of country Russia is. Russia is authoritarian. Presidential president, but authoritarian. They wanted mass deportation in the face of terror attacks. They have picked up entire populations and thrown them at the airport and go out without looking back. You don't see one person fighting or anything. You had the same situation in the French airport where the migrants were fighting the authorities. If you tell me if you want a mass deportation in uh, Europe, will we be able to do that? There'll be right wing, left wing. Uh, you know, human rights, everything coming. In Russia, there was a line out of the... No questions asked. 
this is the advantage that uh, the this these countries enjoy over our democratic uh, structures did we will have to consider everybody uh, when they asked everybody to wake it was there a who and cry like when israel in the face of october 7 terror attacks asked the gazan civilian to evacuate they requested them but there was a hue and cry that they are displacing the uh, people and civilians and this and that has any article been written about how russia is doing mass deportations of uh, everybody whoever has a, a non russian name is being thrown out is there where are the human rights people so why this selective process of uh, uh, reporting and why this selective process of uh, implementation that assertive this is what i'm talking of the decisiveness in uh, decision making uh, is evident in authoritarian countries rather than democratic structures and european union lacks this decisiveness completely they've gone for a toss they have just messed it up yeah uh, yeah i mean russia's chasing the tajiks around all over russia arresting people suppressing them um depriving them of civil rights there are plenty of tajiks in russia um, only because of the uh, crocus uh, city hall massacre um and he's uh, blaming it on ukraine which is ridiculous and and what you know what i get out of that is that he has he has and will continue to use his autocratic powers um to suppress uh, uh free speech to suppress democracy and to suppress minority groups and to use them as scapegoats remember that 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 oh. special word scapegoats so you know autocrats love scapegoats hitler loved scapegoats and so bottom line is um you know he seems to be strong and they said once in a while a journalist makes the case that uh, putin is losing power um just as journalists make the case that trump is losing power but um, we got to see what happens on both of those now let's talk about israel uh israel doesn't have any friends uh at the united nations even as recently as a, a week or two ago the united states abstained in a vote to condemn israel um and i you know i don't know where we are i don't know where the united states is it seems to be changing position biden seems to be wishy-washy on that one too and he's getting into these public arguments with netanyahu um and uh, you know that detracts from uh Netanyahu's war effort for sure it detracts from Israel's um opportunities to defend itself uh it encourages people in this country who want to have anti-Israel anti-Zionist anti-Semitic rallies and protests especially on the college campuses so <clears throat> what he's doing what Joe Biden is doing is playing into the hands of those who would attack Israel um and it, it goes from the united nations to the college campuses to those billion uh, muslims around the world who who love to hear it but don't you know they, they love to hear it but they still don't don't like the united states <laughs> Biden can get down on his knees and they still wouldn't like the united states he's trying to get votes for november but i'm not sure that's going to work either so what he's doing is he's responding on a daily basis to some issue that comes up sometimes it's completely meaningless um and um, in, in effect may i say he doesn't have a plan to deal with these things either your thoughts jay so much <laughs> the indecisiveness uh, we talk about germany but what about the indecisiveness in uh, the us itself it is happening at a faster pace over here than in germany and we are having an impact on the world more uh, strongly than anywhere else and biden j uh there was this talk about lack of christ on easter uh, uh holidays did you notice it there was no uh, celebration of christianity it's just ramadan so uh, this oh, uh, what is that uh, over assertion of uh, one religion and the uh, muting of one other religion which is not aggressive or not uh, that vocal enough if you uh, suppress them they will still stay quiet and pleasing this appeasement politics that has taken place globally jay is not going to help uh, the populations jay uh, uh, the jews 
they will fight their way back they will stay together but when the christians will get agitated jay it will be an all out crusade that is for sure how much you can suppress one side and keep one side uh, appease one side is going to go out of balance jay just for votes just for electoral politics you're trying to please one section and like you said they can't be pleased that they have a very high standard of getting pleased they don't get pleased and they're dissatisfied as easily as they were pleased so we don't we can't count on their votes we can't do anything so it's better that you stay indifferent don't hurt don't harm but stay indifferent but when you're giving them the chance to dominate like we spoke about in a couple of uh, 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 programs day the end is no other religion has a political road map Uh, mark these words jay no other religion has a political except for islam they talk about this uh, just division of uh, the population in two believers and non believers where do any religion has uh, you know nobody says everybody says god is equal or respect other religions this is the only one which talks about believers and non believers and just protect your own believers so the political road map that they have to spread it all across when you have indecisiveness like this non protection of your uh, uh, own uh, uh, religion this is going to just give them more space to dominate no they will suppress and the result of this suppression there is a impending terror attack uh, in any democratic land today because we have unfiltered migration you remember when we go to the airport we are asked uh, uh, questions at the uh, immigration counter why are you here when are you leaving when is your ticket at the visa section there is a kind of a methodology to this doesn't uh, where is the methodology when people are jumping across fences when they are walking across uh, forests when they are uh, walking inside so there is we have a very high security risk right now everywhere in europe in america everywhere boys So let me let me uh, ask you a very 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 difficult question. Okay. <clears throat> Here we are, and it's uh, only a few months left of the election. Uh, Donald Trump is, um, you know, trying to undo Biden in every way possible. Um, Donald Trump is trying to undo the country. You know, so even if Biden beats him, he, uh, Trump will try to undo the country and democracy. terms of uh, you know a succession but if you were by today as the president what would you do to address this problem the problem of um, you know the, the country is in divided mode on so many issues that affect foreign policy the country asks him the, the divided groups ask him to take different positions with regard to foreign policy with regard for example to ukraine and israel and he's stuck on the fence being pulled in at least two directions how do you deal with that jay he is at um, a point of multifaceted blunders he's just committing blunders point to point when he uh the biggest blunder was when he reduced support from israel when he's talking of uh, come to jesus uh, uh meeting with uh, netanyahu that is wrong jay if you are an ally you support and in the wake of a terror attack after you've experienced terror attacks you support he is uh what do you say uh, pick and nick uh, uh, games he's playing he is trying to support the lgbt community by declaring easter sunday as a day of uh, 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 this that is not right you keep um, religion out of this he's mixing everything jay and that is the problem the same thing he's doing to international geopolitics he is mixing up things he's trying to please uh, hamas he's uh, hamas i don't know human rights he's trying to uh, change the image of america as uh, what i don't know if you're supporting israel so sup- they have one goal to eliminate hamas they very clear if you're supporting israel you have to support that goal you can't have a selective support for uh, any country which is fighting terror because we know terror strikes from anywhere so this decisiveness in international politics j is so important and biden is losing his way every day and that is giving um 
electoral hunting ground to uh, Trump. Trump is just romping home. I mean, every rally he goes, he's got enough material to uh, talk about uh, the day, about the week, about the month that might Biden had. When you see uh, Trump declaring uh, univocal support for uh, Israel, you feel good about it. When you see him talking about, uh, you know, uh, the conservative side of religion, you think he, but he's not that. Trump is giving up a showmanship uh, facade because Biden is giving him enough of a script to do it. So, and what, what actually, about the Biden press here? What about Trump's. the media? You know, I feel oh, that, um, that what they do, the two of them, is uh, is telescoped by the by the media, and so the media has to make choices too as to what, what to focus on. Um, and I'll give you an example. The seven uh, food workers who were killed a few days ago, um, that has become a huge, big story. Um, and nobody in his right mind is going to say the Israelis intended to do that. Um, nobody would say that the Israelis intend to do genocide. That's ridiculous. And the Jews know better than anyone in the world what genocide is, and they're not, they're not going to repeat it against someone else. They are merely trying to eliminate Hamas for their own protection. It's that simple. Um, but the press will take, you know, the, the, the hospital issue, the press will take those seven workers, the food workers, and just telescope that out to cover you know the 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 the, the news sphere, um, and so everybody talking about that. So my question is: um, Is the press doing a good job at enabling uh, Biden to get his message out? At enabling Biden to deal with this ongoing attack by Trump? Jay, if I can really say to you that the press has been very biased and. Uh, uh, it has not been uh, very neutral in reporting events. It has always given a color to what they have reported. And it has always been towards the side of, uh, um, how do you say that? Now they're presenting Trump in a better way than Biden. Biden blunders, his, his fumbling is highlighted, but his policies would not be. From the beginning of his presidency, they have been doing that, correct? And uh, Israel and Palestine, which uh, happened, they never, ever supported Israel from day one. They never, ever have given a straight out reporting. You have always had a biased report. You have always spoken about genocide, uh, this, but you have not spoken about what Israel is going through. Will it exist tomorrow? They are talking, uh, they never, they never give these kind of articles which speak about the reality. They will give you, they are the pseudo liberals uh, uh, that the press has become Jay. Pseudo, actually false, means they they don't have a standing and they are sold. Media is being sold. You pay them, you write your articles. You pay them, they will babble for you. Uh, mm -hmm. They are not reporting like they used to. There is no uh, unbiased reporting. There is no balanced reporting. There is one kind of reporting where you talk about both the sides. Uh, yeah, or you, or you, or you report the, the raw meat, the raw meat stories. I mean, exactly. Trump, for example, was famous for doing that when he was in the real estate business. He would create news. He would phone up the, the media and he would fill their pages. Um, and I think that's the way propaganda works. You fill up the other guy's pages and they, they're not Akamai enough to see what you're doing. So they, they print it all, including the raw meat stories, which, which suck the oxygen out of everything else. So you lose your way. Um, that, that's my view of it. But I want, I want to go back to Olaf Schultz, though. Um, I'm, now I'm going to make you Olaf Schultz for a moment. Uh, <laughs> he, should only, he should only look like you. Uh, so, so Olaf Schultz, now, what would you do if you were him? in order to, um, you know, have a plan um, to deal as a, a, a leader of Europe, uh, to uh, respond to Putin, and to really help Ukraine? 
Jay, first and foremost, would undo the migration policy that Merkel has unleashed on Europe. Again, tighten borders. Again, try to have a vetting of the population. You know, you have terror cells which are operating and they are going to uh, uh, come on big time to Europe itself uh, very badly. And uh, what we talk about today will happen tomorrow. It is just a matter of few days because, Jay, Europe, has, Europe is a democracy and it has been radicalized at such a fast pace, uh, it's now unrecognizable. We used to enjoy the European culture, Jay. That is for sure. And uh, for Vladimir Putin, uh, Jay, Schlotz is very, very uh, indecisive. He stays indecisive because his uh, Germany's entire concept was to create uh, an existence with uh, the cooperation of Russia. Now, in the Ukraine-Russia war to uh, eliminate Russia from their entire policy is hurting them. Uh, because the entire existence was to have both the Russian uh, cooperation and to uh, flourish on the European stage. But now Germany stands very alone in this kind of a battle. And Ukraine support, it has been doing what it can. It has to rather increase or make it more, uh, like you said, give the decisive uh, weapons which Ukraine needs rather than the uh, the bulk of the uh, ammunition or whatever. They have to give we weapons which work and that would be more effective. Um, and Jay, in the European Union, uh, France is taking a higher place uh, over Germany just because of Macron's leadership. There is no uh, difference in German and Fr French capabilities. But uh, Macron's uh, experience uh, and his leadership is taking France a notch above Germany. Okay, we're out of time. I have really enjoyed this conversation, but it's certainly a moving target. Everything we've said could change next week, and we will address that next week, won't we? <laughs> Dr. Absolutely. Rupati Kondakar, <laughs> global strategist, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. Aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.